Hello, this is Quinn with PTSD Wall Black. Processing this feeling of powerlessness that I've had since I was a kid, but I'm just recognizing that old feeling is coming up now as an adult. As I'm dealing with a situation of experiencing gang stalking, experiencing, um, I know what's happening with targeted videos being submitted to me, because um, one can do that with AdSense. If you pay for a certain demographic to receive um, uh, certain images or to be pressed towards certain images, I can see that that could be um, done. And my reality is I am experiencing these videos. I have video proof of it. And... At the same time, the way the world works is, well, what were you doing when this man was inappropriate towards you? And it's kind of like, well, you shouldn't have wore a short skirt, or you shouldn't have been out at that time, or you shouldn't have been here or there at that time. But the fact is, is that I still am experiencing the stalking, the hurt, and the assault. And what the world is seeing is me reacting to the constant submission of these triggering items. And everybody's like, oh, Quinn can't get over it. Quinn won't move on. No, it's the folks behind the stalking, behind this process, don't want to move on. I've tried to move on multiple times. I've tried to be quiet. I've tried to go on and do my own thing. I try to sing positive songs only. And these people just wanted to keep coming after me. So, what I'm left to do is to feel what my reality is around this. And I tell you, I'm truly in touch with that 11-year-old little girl that came up with the solution that I should just cut myself, not feel the feelings of what I really feel, because the world says they're not important, and just go on to do the next task. I actually felt that within my body. But luckily, I'm a 41-year-old woman who's gone through so much fucking therapy and so much fucking recovery that I could hold her. That I could see her reality. That I could validate that reality. And that, yes, that was a viable solution in a world that tells you that you are black, you are fat, and your voice does not matter. That was a viable solution at the time to just shut up and take it and punish yourself for trying to do too much and the cutting was a way of feeling those feelings. I had to feel something because I wasn't allowed to express what I felt. The blood was expression of what I felt. And as I was feeling that today, I, what I've done to, you know, since I stopped cutting was I went into compulsive overeating and again, that was stuffing my feelings. Don't say how you feel. Shut up. And that's what I've done. And so now, I'm recognizing I have this responsibility to say how I feel, to state my reality, even if it's just me making these videos and I'm the only one who sees them. This is me validating my reality. And that the cutting is not the only option. And that though these targeted videos are being done towards me, um, I do have a responsibility to keep myself secure, to keep myself safe. And that may look like disappearing, going off of social media for a few months. Um, I like when one of my girlfriends actually said divorcing her cell phone. <laughs> Just divorcing your cell phone. Get, switching to one of those burner flip phones and letting that be your phone number. That's it. There's no internet access or anything. So that's, that's a thought that I'm really having, so there's no access to me. Um, yeah. And so, what, and I've, I've lived my life without, with a, with a little flip phone, so I know I can survive that. But coming to this real feeling, this real depth, and I hope it'll be useful for someone else out there who is a self-injurer, active self-injurer, or who is a cutter, um, that you may be able to find some peace in knowing that you have every right to validate what your experience is. And you can do that 
I can do that. I do the, did this for myself just now through crying, through just wailing and letting that out, through journaling what my feelings are, what my needs are, um, how this affects me, whatever the situation is, journaling how it affects me. And where was I wrong? Well, I'm not accepting the world as it is, which is a very uh, male-centered, uh, chauvinistic world. I live in a racist society that will not hear the voice of a black woman. So I'm accepting that. I'm accepting of that. And in doing so, I get to move forward. Because what can I do knowing that this world exists this way and knowing that I need to express what I'm going through? And I was doing it through singing on the karaoke app or acting out scenes. That was really healthy for me, extremely healthy. I started losing weight as a result of doing it. And I found more love in my marriage as a result of doing it because I was present. I was whole. I mattered. I was fully there. And these people want to take that voice. It's okay. I still have a responsibility to sing it, act it out. I can read poems. I can read books. I can recite. I can record. I have an old ass camcorder, an old ass uh, digital camera that I can fucking act on. <laughs> you know, there's no limitations here. Even if I didn't have a phone, I have old school resources that I could go to. So, that are not connected to the internet in any way whatsoever. Okay. <laughs> So, then it's my responsibility, is what I'm saying, my responsibility to loving on me, to name these feelings and needs. So, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I still don't have to subscribe to society's views and norms that I should just shut up and take it. You shut up and take it. That's what you do for yourself, but yet you're still drinking. You're still doing drugs. You're smoking. You're overeating. You're having crazy ass sex, or you're not having sex. You're trying to control things in some sort of way whatsoever. But you're telling me to shut up and take it. Actually, in, in this country, we have an entire pandemic of shut up and take it where people choose to take guns out on each other. So, now I'm going to do the healthy thing for me. So people are like, um, I talked to someone today and she's like, well, you just, you need to be non-accessible to these individuals in any way whatsoever. And I'm like, isn't that very interesting how the... People who are actually doing the harm, the people who've hacked my computer, hacked my phone, committed crimes, committed a hate crime against me um, as someone who's disabled, black, and who was trying to open a safe space for black people to act, write, and sing, those individuals still get to go about their normal way, their normal lives. They still get to go about that, whereas I, on the recipient, on the receiving end of this, have to change everything about my reality and my connection. Isn't that a very interesting world we live in? And it's just accepting that justice is not the language of the land. It's not. It's whatever makes white men comfortable. That's the language of the land. Prioritizing their needs and definitely not making them feel any discomfort or having to change or admit that they're wrong or made a mistake. So, I have to change everything about myself, how I reach out to my family, my phone number. Okay. To join acting communities, I have to th do things that are live or find an acting community maybe wherever I live. And I possibly will even have to move as a result of this. Because <laughs> these people might have my address. I'm the one who has to change everything. Okay. Fine. But you're not going to stop me from expressing myself. You can't stop me from healing. You can't. You simply can't. Because I have survived so much and I know the value of my life. I know my worth. 
and I won't accept any less. So yeah, I will step away so I can breathe, so that I can heal, so that I can show up full and present and whole within my marriage and in my family and part of my community. I'll step away. But I'm not gone. <laughs> All that I've said is true. All that I've said exists. It is real. And me stepping away does not take away the fact that there was a crime committed towards me. That there was continuous um, abuse, even if it's not uh, trackable to one person. It's, it did exist. It did happen. So yeah. There are still choices and options that I have around this that bend towards peace, love, and healing. And I'm going to pursue them, regardless of how hateful, spiteful, jealous, angry, sad, disappointed these people who are pursuing me may be. I'll step back. But I will help my community heal no matter what. It's a no matter what for me. Because my purpose in life is linked to striving to help black and brown communities to heal, to know joy, to have hope, and to have peace. And if that's something that you're against, okay, you're against it. But I still move towards it. And so I take care of myself right now. I listen to that injured child that made the decision to self-injure instead of expressing no matter what. I'm going to allow her to express. I'm going to be with her and not punish her, but validate her, create with her, and love on her. You cannot stop me from doing that. And I'm going to love the fuck out of this kid. That 11-year-old kid who made the choice to harm herself instead of inconveniencing anyone else. No. No more. We do not harm ourselves. We celebrate and love ourselves. The world does not have to be shitty. It's just a choice that we're making every day to live on the shitty side of things. Usually out of greed and fear. I choose differently. <laughs>